Good morning, YouTubers, and welcome once again to the eastern wing of the Stink Bug Works. You know the whole diatribe. Anyway, I'm here to talk about a bunch of things. First of all, <clears throat> let's talk about this. This is the 132nd wire drive for the Atlas Hydroplane, that the 120 scale atlas hydroplane that i uh that I, I made a handful of kits and i have a couple that i i still run and big b has one of my kits and like big b he likes to go fast this kit was designed kind of to be a scale modest powered thing that you could run out there and kind of look cool Big B likes to go fast, and I mean, I can't blame him. <laughs> I can't blame him at all. It's cool. Anyway, to go fast, you need power. This thing wasn't really designed to handle a whole lot of power. And so, if you're building a 120th Atlas to go fast, I'd use an Octura 098 uh, cable that'd be the way to go. And uh, it'd be real easy, Big B, to just pop that uh, uh, stuffing tube out of the whole hull and then uh, carve a new exit, make a, a new tube for the, the cable, and bingo, you're there. So uh, I'd recommend Octura 98 cable. Now, before I put this down, Let's talk about this. Where on earth did I ever come up with the idea for a little tiny 132nd wire drive? Well, I'm going to show you here. I'm going to show you. What we're about to see is a boat that is actually old enough to vote. Actually, it's old enough to buy beer here in California. You can vote when you're 18, but you got to be 21 years old to buy beer. And look, Steve, it says Oric Enterprises once again. Actually, this was the first of the Oric Enterprise hulls, and I had decals left over. So when I did one of the jet steppers, I said, oh, hell, I'll use these decals. But this was originally the, um, the first Oric Enterprise hulls. Now get a load of this. In here, it has two counter-rotating 132nd wire drives. Now, how this worked was there's a fixed stuffing tube here, and up at the front end of the tube, it's reduced to this inner diameter, and I packed this full of grease, including this little gap there, and that serves as a, a pretty good seal. I don't get any water in this boat. The bearings stop 90% of it, and then this stops whatever's left. But this was the birth of the wire drive, and you can see it was real short, didn't have much bend, and I ran it on 2S with motors that were somewhere around, oh gosh, what were these? These were like around 3,000, 3,500 kV at the most. So, you know, it was it was pretty modest power, and I ran 30-millimeter uh, counter-rotating props on the thing. And you know what? There's nothing saying. I couldn't just... I couldn't just put a battery in there. Ah, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, this was the birth, the origin of the uh, 132nd wire drive. So we'll put this away. And now we're going to get to 
the real subject at hand is the jet stepper and where I'm going next. And I'll tell you how you could possibly duplicate that. Although you're not going to like one of the aspects of it. Okay, so prototype, what is this? Six. I threw a coat of primer on there to see where I got some more sanding to do. I got a little bit of a corner there. This this silk span process is by far the best way to go on this foam. Forget that that paper mache thing. That just didn't work. That was a failure. F. F. Give it a big F. Um, this, I'll tell you how to do it. You paint on your water-based sanding sealer. Let it dry. Then you take your silk span and you wet it out with a mister. Put it on, spread it out. Take your paintbrush and kind of brush it out, work out all the little bubbles. If you get little folds in the compound curves, don't worry about them. Just try to get them to lay flat because they'll sand off afterwards and become invisible. Um, and after a couple of coats of that, you get a really hard, durable, durable surface. Yeah, it'll dent, you know, you see here. But for the most part, it stays pretty much intact. I mean, this thing's been through, you know, uh, World War III. And <laughs> other than, this is a, a heat bubble. There's, there was a, a, a focused light on here, and it just went and popped that little bubble. So look at here, folks. Now... This was the boat that was uncontrollable space shuttle using this motor. Now, this motor is 3,060 kV. I measured this one at 2315. This, I found on eBay, the guy had a whole bunch of these. And what they were were... Uh, drone motors made by Paul McCready's group, Aero Environments. And they had a aluminum tube epoxied onto the motor. This was originally a hacker motor, believe it or not. And, but they had this aluminum tube that had a quick connect thing that they could quick connect the motor, plug it in on a... Uh, spy drone, you know, with cameras and go fly over enemy lines, that kind of thing. So I'm going to try a lower KV motor in this. And oh my God, what is he thinking? Is he actually going to use one of those crappy U-joints? And the answer to that is yes, for a number of reasons. Uh, reason number one, I had it and it fits. Reason number two, you know, getting the perfect motor shaft alignment, you know, with this existing stuff, I said, you know, screw it. I'm just going to do this and live with it. And it's merely a test bed. Uh, if it works, I'll get a real coupler. And when the shaft is being installed, I'll install the motor at the same time with the motor coupled to the shaft so it'll all go in as one unit and alignment will be perfect. This after the fact, it's really hard to get perfect, especially when you're rebuilding something. So, so I'm just gonna live with this and realize it makes a lot of noise. So that'll be my next experiment. We'll see what this does. And we'll go from there. And I think that's about everything I have to say. We talked about the silk span. We talked about this. Oh, oh, I know what we need to talk about. This motor, the guy's no longer selling them. And the KV was what? Around 23 and change. Well, get a load of this. There's a guy on eBay. And he's selling these. This is a Surmark 2030 motor with a KV of 2400. That's right about what this is. The problem is, the problem is, this guy is crazy. 
he thinks this is worth $45. Now, I made a deal with him for three of them, but, you know, I still paid way, way, way too much, but I considered it research and development costs, you know, so it does have a nice finned aluminum heat sink, and I think it was this one that I took the label off to get better contact with the, uh, the, the motor casing. So... If, you, if this works, this may be the setup. Another problem I'm looking at is mounting it may be complicated. Although, I'm thinking a couple of laser cut pieces of 16th plywood that would go around this boss, kind of like a wood washer that would glue onto the back of your motor mount and then that way, when you put the motor in, it would be centered on that, just perfect. Otherwise, you're riding on this little thin boss with these, you know, but I'm just thinking like laser cut plywood washers. Or, you know what? Hand cut. You drill a hole in a piece of plywood and it's square on the outside and who cares? So I may go that way if I decide to run these motors. So that would be how I would consider mounting them. I'm not sure if they have a weird shaft size or not. This must, I'd have to check it out. If I go this way, I'll give you all the data on that, all the data you need. Um, these motors were obviously a failure in something this size, but just for the sake of it, what happened? What would happen if somebody wanted to, oh, make something, <laughs> make something even smaller, something almost insanely small? You know, this might be fun in a, a little rigor about <laughs> about like that, uh, and running on three of those single batteries that the uh, that you uh, power the blade helicopter with I don't know what their amp hour rating is but they're they're smaller than the blade of this rudder you know they're little tiny things so that's the last of my thoughts for now we'll take one final look around red alert red alert all hands, battle stations, red alert, red alert. We'll take one final look around and say, jet out.